Hello again, everyone. Edwin Learn back once again in this YouTube astrological segment. I'm going to be giving you my Virgo July 2020 horoscope forecast part two of two. And yes, this does apply and pertain to the sun, moon, and ascendant. Anyway, people, first thing up is as far as July goes, Mars will be in Aries, so the eighth house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. Now, at this time, uh, this could be about a lot of aggressive and assertive action and crisis situations. Uh, it could be in shared resources, giving uh, moral, emotional, monetary support to others. There could also be a lot of energy and vitality, especially being in Aries, a lot of energy and vitality injected into eighth house uh, matters, a lot of activity in matters pertaining to one side. Could be insurance and taxes, making some major change or transformation, dealing with crisis uh, situations. It could be dealing with um, intimate, uh, someone you're in an intimate or sexual relationship with. And also could be about demonstrating very good mechanical ability. If you're somebody that has very good mechanical ability, this could be the opportune time to show it. Mars and Aries uh, is energy, which could be very, I mean, very, very proficient as far as uh, mechanics go. So if you really, and, and you might, and it might be more expression of this during this transit. So if it's something that you have, it might be something that you may be demonstrating more, and perhaps in, in things that involve making that, that are connected with transformation, such as doing uh, like like rebuilding vehicles or engines or or recycling so or some something where you're or sculpting something that you're using right? well sculpting really wouldn't apply it would be more like the what i said about the car the uh, rebuilding a vehicle or doing something that is um is or rebuilding an engine as an example so uh it could or just putting some machines together out of old you know, old parts or, or something something that something that could be where transformation is involved in using mechanical ability now in some cases too I know a lot of you don't want me to say the dreaded D word but you know going to anyway the eighth house is the house of death many people experience trends like this and they come out and escape but just be very careful if you're in a, like a volatile truculent neighborhood you're talking about Mars and in, in, in the sign of Aries and both both this energy could mean Aries and Mars I'd say would be connected with gunfire so just be very careful at this time uh, Virgo now the next thing up and it could also manifest in some cases as an injury uh, to the head or the face that might require uh, surgery as well. So those are some ways this may manifest and pan out. Next thing up. Well, Jupiter will be in Capricorn still. So the fifth house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. Now, this could manifest in a number of ways. This could be a very opportune period, very fortuitous and beneficial for a Capricorn love. If you're unattached at this time, Virgo, it may be uh, you might be involved in some romantic situation with an older person. It may simply be a superficial interlude or fling, but it could also manifest in some cases and showing a lot of exuberance and some kind of Capricorn like hobby. It could be doing like mountain climbing. I mean, that could be a sport as well, but the fifth house is connected with sports. It could be something like with crafts or doing something that requires structure. It could be putting together, like you ever see like those little, um, those die, I guess they're those die cast model cars that you put together, those model cars, those little small ones, but you understand uh, what I'm saying. And it could also be at times too that uh, remember that Jupiter could be very paradoxical, could be very strongly benign and benevolent, but could also have a tendency to enlarge and expand. In some cases, this might enlarge and expand responsibilities to uh, one's personal popularity, to one's love life. It could be towards some kind of investment as well, and even children and lovers. So anyway, well, the next thing up is, well, Saturn will be in Capricorn uh, for the, for practically the whole month. So the fifth house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. Now, at this time, well, Virgo, you might be experiencing and maybe some inhibitions or restrictions and limitations in matters of the heart in terms of love right now, in terms of finding some kind of fun amusement and enjoyment. But it could also manifest in some cases in getting structure and discipline 
in these areas. Now, in some cases, you might find yourself taking care of a sickly or debilitated. It could be a lover or a child. It might be something that might be uh, something Capricorn related, such as something with the knees, the bones, the joints, the hamstrings, and it may be making you feel somewhat despondent and melancholy at this time. Uh, could also be about gaining structure and discipline in matters with investment, speculation, uh, gambling. Uh, it could also be a time too where older people might be factoring more in as far as your hobbies go, as uh, so your fun, your amusement, enjoyment. It might be something too where you're doing something Saturn related as far as hobbies uh, or fun may go. It might be playing some kind of business or political board games or online computer game if they do have it. Maybe uh, it could be something too when you when you look at this as well I mean this is something where though like anything that could be Saturn related could be something that might you might really enjoy at this time maybe it's even being an authority figure or a father figure perhaps to somebody if applicable next thing up well Uranus will be in Taurus still so the ninth house is what will be emphasized and highlight now this may manifest in a multitude of ways one way that may is that uh, you might be dealing with some unusual or unorthodox, maybe um, it could be or shocking behavior from in-laws, from grandchildren, it could be from foreigners at this time or someone you may know at a religious congregation or college university. It could also be at this time too, where uh, in some cases this could be about Uranus uh, publishing or higher education. It might be doing something uh, Uranus like such as something with astrology or an esoteric subject, aerospace, astronomy, innovation, computers, electronics. It might be something that you might be involved as far as publishing goes or even taking a higher education course in one of those uh, fields. But the experiences now well, it could be a time too where also uh, Taurus friendships, they could be Taurus, Sun, Moon, or Ascended people, or simply ones that embody Taurian characteristics might figure more prominently in your higher education, your philosophical outlook, your religious beliefs. You might un adopt an unorthodox type of you know, religion right now, or, or maybe some kind of philosophy at this time, uh, Virgo. And it could also be a period, too, where you might be dealing with, I mean, this could be about having to take a very unanticipated or unpredictable type of long-distance journey, traveling abroad, something of uh, that nature at this time. And, and you're looking at uh, this as well. Um, anyway. Well, next thing up, Neptune will still be in Pisces, so the seventh house is what will be emphasized in the highlight. Now, at this time... Well, this could be about the dissolving or dissipation of one's uh, relationships, uh, a partner. It could be a partnership that might be dissolved. I have this placement natally, and I'm certainly one that con seems like it's very perpetual dissipation, dissolving of my, my friendships and relationships. Uh, this could also be a time to where it might be very difficult in deciphering the character composition of others at this time. Wherever Neptune is in one's horoscope, it's a point where things can often be very nebulous, vague, and unclear, and it's, it's very hard to see the details when you're talking about Neptunian uh, energy. But on a positive note, it could manifest in some cases as being a public speaker connected with the metaphysical, which could include astrology. So if it's something that you're into, like something with the metaphysical, which could include astrology, this could be the opportune time to be a speaker uh, on that. And it could also be a period, too, uh, that when you're talking about Neptune energy, and Neptune energy can often manifest in where you might be fantasizing and daydreaming in contrast to actually taking action. So, uh, and especially if this is making an adverse aspect to uh, your, natal, your, your natal Mars, your Ascendant, or your Sun, you might be feeling more lethargic in these seventh house matters than you or than than ordinarily so any and it might be a time as for example if you're unattached if you're trying to 
uh, get or have a relationship or activities with a grandmother or legal matters you might feel more like daydreaming about them as opposed to actually taking action in connection uh, with them or some competition now it could also manifest in some cases as a Neptune a uh, form of competition you might get involved in. It could be something with poetry or dancing or something with the metaphysical, which includes astrology, something with chemistry, um, anything that photography, anything Neptune related. Hold on a moment, people. Sorry about that. I'm back. But anyway, Last but not least, put all being Capricorn still, so the fifth house is what will be emphasized and highlighted at this time. Well, I know a lot of you don't want me to say the dreaded D word, but you know I'm going to anyway. In some cases, this could manifest in the actual or literal death of a child or a lover or somebody that figured prominently in your fun, your amusement, your enjoyment. It could have been somebody that you share a sport, uh, sport um, activity with. Uh, now, in some cases, too, just be careful that even though Virgo has the tendency to be frugal and may, frugal, maybe even downright parsimonious, this could sometimes manifest in very compulsive gambling. You've got to really watch that instinct toward gambling at this time, especially if this is like say for example making an adverse aspect to Jupiter that could indicate re not just compulsive energy but even reckless now uh also, too, it could be about getting involved in Pluto-like investments. It could be doing something like if there's a recycling firm or, or something uh, that, that's connected. Maybe, I mean, you're talking about Pluto energy, something with something that's nuclear, anything that could be Pluto-related, or even some kind of Plutonian enjoyment. It could be something with solving some kind of mysteries or investigation or something with uh, the occult, which can include supernatural occult, can include astrology. You may be involved in extreme sports at this time if you are somebody that's athletic. And uh, but remember the main what's important too is that when you're talking about Plutonian energy, it could be wherever it is in one's chart. It could indicate where we expect some kind of infallibility. So guard against expecting some perfection in matters pertaining to children, to lovers, uh, to people that you might have some kind of investment with or people you share uh, some kind of fun amusement or enjoyment with at this point in time so anyway people that will conclude this YouTube astrological segment until next time people Edwin learn and stay well